Hey, what's up guys? This is the Wheelman282 here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to install a mod chip inside your PlayStation 1. So basically what this means is uh, the mod chip is going to allow you to play your burn games on your PS1. It'll also make your console region free so you can play your original imports if you want to. And you can also play um, burned imports if you want to download those and burn those. The mod chip we're going to be installing today is called the, the Mayumi version 4. This is probably one of the most up-to-date and reliable mod chips for the PS1. And I will include a link in the description where you can buy um, PS1 mod chips from 0-2K11 at ObscureGamers.com. So as I'm going through this video, um, I, I want to give you, go ahead and give you a disclaimer now that everything in the video you should follow with a grain of salt. And the reason I say that is because there are so many variations of the PS1 and so many variations of mod chips that it's it's kind of cumbersome to include all those variations in a single video and it not take you know forever. So basically what that means is depending on what version PS1 you have and what version or what chip you have programmed will determine where you solder the wires on the motherboard to get your chip installed. It's it's kind of a mess. Um, so again, take, take take everything you see here with a grain of salt. It's probably going to be different for your situation, um, unless you're installing this this same um, coded chip in the same version of PlayStation. It's probably going to be different for you. So on that note, there are several versions of the PlayStation. Um, there's the 1000 all the way up to the 9000 versions, and then there's the 101, which is the PS the small PS1 Slim. Um, they can all be mod chipped. Um, just depending on uh, you know what version you have versus what chip you have determines where you're going to solder those wires on there. So today we're going to be installing it in a 9001 PS1. So if you don't know what version you have, um, take your PS1 and just flip it over. And it should be here on the label and you can see right here it says SEPH uh, 9001. So basically this is, this is a, a US NTSC uh, 9000 model PS1. The chip we're going to be installing is the uh, the Mayumi version 4. Like I said, probably this is the most uh, the most reliable, the most compatible uh, mod chip that you can get as of today. The downfall of this particular chip is that you can't install it in the version 1000 uh, model PS1, but you can install it in 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 any other version PS1. Now the the 1000 model can be can be mod chipped. You just have to get a, uh, a chip with a different uh, program flash to it. Again, 02K11 sells sells all those versions of mod chips, so don't worry about that. One important note to consider when you're getting a mod chip is whether it supports uh, stealth uh, capabilities or not. So basically what that means is some of the later release games for PS1 actually have a built-in software that can detect a chip installed in your system and if it does, uh, you know, it deploys an anti-piracy measure where it won't let you play that game. So all the newest mod chips or the newest versions of the code flash to the chip will include a capability called stealth. And basically what that means is after a short time of, of the chip booting the game up or the PS1 booting the game up, the chip will turn itself off to avoid being detected by that game and it'll let you play the game. Uh, the Mayumi version 4 supports this. I think some other chips support that as well. I'm not, I uh, can't remember exactly right off the top of my head. But the basic thing to take away here is if you have a version, if you have, if your PS1 version is 5500 up to 1000 and the 101 model, try to get a chip that, chip that has or supports stealth technology or whatever you want to call it. Um, those consoles support that and you're just better off getting a chip that supports stealth. The 1000 model um, is not compatible with a chip that supports stealth um, in a general sense. If your chip does support stealth, you can install it in a 1000 model, but the stealth function doesn't work and you, there's a little bit different method to install in the chip. So like I said, this is, kind of a, this is kind of cumbersome. There's a lot of things to take in and a lot of things to consider. If you have any questions, you just leave a comment down in the, in, in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer it. Um, there's also a lot of people um, on the Yasu Zone and um, Obscure Gamers that can answer that for you as well if you're a member of there. Um, so don't be afraid to ask. Um, I'll definitely help you out any way I can. 
So just a little bit about this matchup. So PS1 matchups are, they aren't technically manufactured per se. It's actually a, an 8-bit microcontroller um, that's just flashed with a, with a program. So this is a, a PIC 12C508A. And this is nothing more than just a simple 8-bit microcontroller that someone has flashed with a, a program so it will act as a mod chip for your PS1. Um, you can buy these chips from like Mauser or DigiKey and you can actually flash them yourself if you have a burner and a PC. Um, so it's technically possible to make your own PS1 mod chips very easily. You just have to you know, buy the parts. I personally don't have a burner at all to do that. So I, had, you know, I, had to, I have to buy my mod chips as of right now. Chips are pretty inexpensive. Um, generally they range between five and ten dollars so you know definitely affordable so it's really the best option for playing backups on your ps1 so anyway i'm done rambling now i, I wanted to fill you guys in on the information and the caveats of choosing a mod chip versus your playstation model but like i said there's a lot of information it's cumbersome so um, if you have a question ask me i'll do my best to answer it um, you can also ask on the iso zone or obscuregamers.com and those people also try to help you out too anyway i'm done um, i'm going to go ahead and tear the ps1 down to the motherboard and i'll show you guys how to install the mod chip so let's quickly go over the tools and the parts you're going to need to be able to pull this off so first off of course you're going to need your playstation um, I, I want you to bear in mind that the tutorial you're going to watch um, is again just guidelines because it's probably going to be different for you especially if you happen to have a 1000 model don't rely on this tutorial too much i mean you could watch it and kind of familiarize yourself with the process but the 1000 model playstation um it's got a different installation method and it even requires a switch um so again don't rely on this video too heavily for that um it, it's good for some just some general guidelines but uh the 1000 model is a little bit different i can do a video on the 1000 model if you want me to um just let me know in the comments I don't have a 1000 model in my possession right now, um, so I have to acquire that somehow, but I can definitely do that if you want me to. So first off, you're gonna need your soldering iron uh, and some solder. Flux is kind of optional. You don't, you probably don't need flux um, for something this delicate, but eh, you, you might need it. It kind of depends on, um, on your skill level with soldering. For installing PS1 mod chips, you typically don't need it that much. Uh, next, you're gonna need uh, some wire strippers and some uh, wire snips. You're gonna need some, some wire to install your mod chip to the board. So this is 30 gauge wire. Um, if you don't have 30 gauge wire, you can um, you can grab some out of a scrap ethernet cable. I think that's about 28 gauge wire and that will uh, work just fine. Um, you're going to need a way to secure your mod chip to the motherboard. So I like to use um, double sticky tape or double sided tape. It's just easier and cleaner. Uh, if you don't want to use that, you, you can certainly use a hot glue gun. I've, I've done it myself and it works fine. It's a little bit more cumbersome, um, sometimes a little bit more messy, but yeah, you know, no big deal. Um, the uh, just double sided tape is a little bit easier, to be honest. Um, and depending on your PlayStation model, you may or may not need um, electrical tape. On some models of the PlayStation, the area in which you install your chip is very close to the metal shielding inside. Um, it doesn't touch it, but it's pretty close. So just as a precaution on, on those models, and I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but on those models, I just like to put some electrical tape um, on the metal shielding in that area, just as an extra layer of protection against shorts. Um, but again, electrical tape is, it is optional depending on your PlayStation model. And of course, last but not least, you're going to need your, your uh, mod chip. So just uh, grab that. Um, and yeah, that's uh, it's a, it's a pretty basic installation guys. Not a lot of tools required Overall installing a chip is not very difficult in a pick in the PS1. I wouldn't say it's the easiest However, it's uh, it's pretty low difficulty. So let's go ahead and take the motherboard out and we'll go ahead and uh, install that chip So here is our motherboard taken out of the case as you can see this motherboard is pretty small That's because this is a 9000 uh, model PlayStation and this is just the motherboard that it has if you're installing your chip in an older model, uh, you know, 5,500, 7,000, whatever, your motherboard's probably gonna be bigger. Some motherboards also have shielding 
soldered onto or you know on top of the uh, of the motherboard. So depending on what model you have, you might have to remove that shielding first. It just kind of depends. But at any rate, what we're going to be fo focusing on is a specific area on the motherboard, and it's usually going to be a chip that looks like this. And here's a little bit closer view of it. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see, but typically when you're installing a, a mod chip in a PS1, you're looking for a chip that looks like this. If you look at the installation diagrams uh, on, in the link in the description, you won't really have to you know, worry about finding that because it's it's in the picture. Uh, but that, this is this kind of chip is typically what you're looking for on your motherboard. That's the, the general area where you'll be installing that chip. So the guide I'm gonna use looks like this. This is just kind of your, your general guide. It gives you some easy points to solder to. Um, if you've never installed a PS1 mod chip before, I would recommend going with this guide. Um, gives you a few solder points that are um, that are pretty large and easy to solder to. However, I am going to make a couple of variations. Um, the number one and the number four solder point are kind of far away from the general area I just pointed out to you. So I'm going to solder the wire, those two wires to alternate points on the motherboard to shorten those wires and just make the install look a little bit better. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it's just, it's just my personal preference and honestly it just uses less wire. The other points you see in the diagram will pretty much remain the same and overall this is going to be a, a pretty pretty easy installation. There are some, some small solder points to solder to, um, especially if you're soldering into the slim PS1. Is, some of those solder points are a little bit smaller than the, the, the bigger PS1 models, um, but overall this isn't too difficult. So anyway, um, I want to go ahead and start prepping the board. Um, what I like to do, um, since this is a pretty small area um, and we're going to be soldering some wires around this chip and it's it can get a little bit cumbersome if you try to install the chip first. So what I tend to do is for a, for a few of these points, I'll take the wire and I'll solder it to the point first or wherever it goes. And then I'll, you know, once those wires are coming off the board, then I'll install the chip and then run those wires to the chip. It's, it's, it's just a little bit easier, to, you know, depending on um, where those points are located. And I'm not, I'm not going to do that for every point. It's just, just a select few because they're a little bit hard to reach once the chip is is attached to the board. So let's quickly talk about chip placement. Um, for the most part, most of the points that you're going to be soldering to are in this general area here. So what I tend to do is I'll take my chip, my mod chip, and I'll just attach it to the top of this, of this integrated circuit right here. You don't have to do that. Um, you can basically place it anywhere you want. Um, in theory, you could put it on top of this chip or this chip or um, anywhere really. Um, doesn't matter a whole lot, but in this video, I'm gonna be placing it on top of this chip since this is kind of in the general area where we're gonna be soldering. In addition to that, I wanna go ahead and give you guys a pro tip. Um, I see a lot of people online uh, that when they install their chip, they'll just use, you know, a whole crap ton of wire. Um, honestly, it's not necessary and it not only does it make your, your job uh, look worse, um, it can sometimes cause signal degradation between the chip and the motherboard. So, you know, you, d you don't need like, like a six inch piece of wire to run, you know, from point A to point B, which is like, you know, maybe two or three inches. Um, it's just not necessary. I'm not trying to call them inexperienced or, you know, trying to put them down. It's just that if you don't, if you just don't use a whole lot of wire, that's just not necessary. Your work will just be come out cleaner and it'll more than likely work better as well at the same time. And that's kind of what I want to show you in this video is just how to do it properly and correct the first time. Um, just so you don't have to, you know, kind of wing the whole, the whole shebang. So anyway, I'm going to zoom back in here on this chip here. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, strip my wires and just kind of put them in place where I need them. And then we'll in install the chip. Okay, so I'm almost ready to start prepping the chip. I've actually forgot to go over one more thing. Um, so our mod, here's our mod chip right here. It's just this little tiny thing here. Um, so if you remember back when we looked at the, um, at the diagram, you'll see, you would see all those numbers right for each for each solder point well that those numbers correspond to the the points on this mod chip so if you don't already know on on a dip package um, you start here with the uh, the little circle up in the top right hand corner and that that indicates that this pin here that's pin number one 
and then you work your way down to pin number four. So it's one, two, three, four. You go across and then it's pin five, six, seven, eight. So it goes kind of in a, in a U shape like that. So pins oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those correspond to the numbers you saw in the installation picture. Um, so, you know, pin number one would go to um, red number one over, you know, wherever it goes. Two goes to number two point the diagram, etc. You know, so it's a pretty simple concept to understand. Um, so anyway, like I said, we need to prep the the uh, board here. So in this area here, the pin numbers that we're going to be prepping are numbers two, three, four, and seven. Those are the four points in this area um, that we just need to solder those wires to really quick. So looking at the diagram. We see that pin number two is this first leg here um, on the chip. It's actually labeled uh, pin number 14 on the chip. I don't really like soldering to the legs because it's just, I don't know, the legs are just really small. If I can help it, I want to solder to the via that connects to that leg. So you can see this, this little tiny via right here beside the number 14. Uh, if you follow that trace, you know, that, that just one millimeter trace, it goes to this first leg. So I'm just going to solder the, the, the wire to that little via here and that's number two number four is actually this this other pin this first pin right here on the on these this integrated circuit and again I'm just going to solder to the via so that is this via right here right but underneath the 13 so I'm just going to solder a wire there for number uh, number four number seven is this this big solder pad right here pretty simple to solder to um, you know not much explanation needed and number three, pin number three, actually gets soldered to uh, this side here of this of this um, this middle resistor. Um, so it's going to be the the inside um, of that of that resistor there. Now again, um, if you don't if you don't feel comfortable um, soldering pin number four to this via here, you can certainly use um, the original diagram and solder pin number four to where it's shown in the diagram. There is nothing wrong with that. It will work perfectly fine. It's just that that pin is all the way on the, all the way across the motherboard and it just uses a lot of wire. So I just, I just want mine to look a little bit neater. So I'm, that's why I'm soldering to this via. You don't have to do that. That is totally up to you. So in order to prep these, these two vias to solder to, I want to take a razor blade. Um, again, if you, you don't necessarily need to do this. <laughs> this, this is just my personal preference. I'm just going to take a razor blade and I'm going to um, lightly scrape the two vias to make to get the, the mask off of them if, if there is any, just so I can solder to that little area. So as you can see, I have go I went ahead and prepped the motherboard here. So uh, just a quick recap. These are points two, three, four, and seven. And those correspond again to the the, the, uh, the pins on our mod chip here. So the next step is we need to go ahead and prepare our mod chip. So since this is a dip package, um, it doesn't exactly fit well on the motherboard. Now you, it is possible to get a get a mod chip that is a, 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 a SOP or a small outline package. And it's actually it sits on a little tiny circuit board um, and it's just it's got a smaller footprint really um, those are like a little bit more convenient um, but you know using dip packages like this is you know it's, it works just fine so basically what we want to do is you know since we can't really solder to these legs efficiently what, what we like to do is take these legs and bend them out straight or parallel um, with the actual mod chip itself and we're going to cut off the little tiny um, 
pin parts. And we're, we're gonna solder just to the, the big flat parts here on the chip. Um, so what I like to do, I'm just like, I just like to take some needle nose pliers and I'll just um, grab those, those pins like that. And I'll just gently, I'll just kind of bend the, bend the pins kind of out like that and just kind of bring them out parallel with the, with the chip. Okay, and so once we have those those pins out parallel, it's gonna kind of look like that. Next, I'm going to take my take some of my snips and just cut off the, the little those sharp edges here or the sharp points because we won't be needing those. All right, so once you have your chip all done, it's just gonna look like something like that. Um, again, we're just soldering to those big points. And so as you can see, the chip is gonna sit about like that. It's a little bit crooked, but you kind of get the idea. And we're just going to solder those wires to the points on the chip. So first we need to secure the chip to the motherboard itself. Um, again, I'm using double sticky tape just because it's a little bit easier. If you wanna use hot glue, um, you certainly can. All right, so as you can see, I have uh, just put a little bit of sticky tape on the bottom of the chip, and I'm just gonna flip it, flip this guy over, and we're gonna attach it. That looks pretty good for me. So I, it's just, you know, it's just in, symmetrical in the middle, so I just like, I had my work look clean. So I'm just going to push on that a few good times um, so that the chip does not come off. And um, we're done, it's not going anywhere. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and attach uh, these wires to the mod chip. So the, again, this is two, three, four, and seven. I'm gonna go ahead and um, solder those to the mod chip and get those done. And then we're, then after we do that, we're gonna go back and do one, five, six, and eight. Um, just because it's a little bit easier to do it like this, this method that I'm using. Um, so these, some of these wires are a little bit too long. That's fine. Um, you, if you want to use the long wires this long, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to trim these down a little bit just to make it look nicer. So again, I'm going to take uh, my snips and my uh, wire strippers here, and I'm just going to, I'm, just, I'm basically just sizing these wires down to fit. Um, so for example, you know, this, this wire here that I'm grabbing, um, this is pin two, and pin two is right here on the chip. It, the wire doesn't really necessarily need to be that long, um, and just needs to be about that long there, and I'll just cut off the excess. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for these four wires here, and then we'll continue. All right, as you can see, we're about halfway done with the installation at this point. So again, we've got two, three, four, and seven installed on the chip here. Uh, so we now need to do um, one, five, six, and eight. So uh, again, looking at the diagram here, you can see that number one is over here beside the serial port. You can see that number eight is down here um, below the ribbon cable slot on one of these points down here, and then five and six are below this, this big processor chip right here. So we're gonna go ahead and install no, uh, pin number one now. Um, so again, so pin number one, if I remember correctly, is power on this on the uh, on these microcontrollers. Um, so again, we're gonna run pin number one over here to this point here. And in order to make it look a little bit more professional, uh, what I like to do um, is I will uh, take the wire and run it underneath the legs of this chip here, uh, either either these legs or, or these, these legs here, it doesn't matter, it's, it's your preference. Um, it just, it, it, it's, think of it as kind of like wire management. Um, it just, it makes your install look nicer.
All right, so there's our pin one done. So next we're gonna move back over here to the, uh, the mod chip itself. And we're gonna go ahead and solder in pin uh, eight here. And again, um, that is gonna go down here below the ribbon cable socket. So it's gonna come down here and then it's gonna solder to uh, this middle solder joint right here. Okay, so we just finished up with pin eight. Uh, so now we have all we have left is pins five and six. So that's uh, obviously that's these two pins right here. So the two solder points for that are actually right below this large processor here. And that's the, uh, so pin six is on this little tiny resistor here. It's on uh, this, this side facing the, the big processor chip. And it's um, this, the left hand resistor right here. The other uh, 0.5 is actually on um, this solder point right here. Um, it's this first one in this row of three. It's this this top one right here. You can see right there. So uh, when I'm installing a mod chip in a PS1, what I, what I like to do is um, instead of running the wire down across the motherboard like this to go to the point, um, for, for pins five and six in particular, this is what I like to do. I will take, um, take those two wires and run them down here to this large processor and I'll um, do the same thing we did for pin one. I'll basically just run the wires, the two wires underneath this row of pins. And so pin six will come out right here and attach um, or a solder to that point there. Pin five will actually continue around here, go under these row of pins and then a solder here on, on this point. So again, we're, you can do it however you want. You don't have to do that. That's totally up to you. I just like to go for neatness. And again, just keep in mind, depending on your version of PS1, you may or may not have to do this. Um, some some versions of the, of the PS1, um, they don't even install on the top side where the processors are. So again, you kind of have to play it by ear because you know I can't include every single version installation in this video. Um, but you kind of get the idea. Alright guys, so there we go. We are all finished. Um, I went ahead and did points five and six off camera just to try to speed this up a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, points five and six go down uh, through these these two rows of pins, and they just come out their respective places. So uh, we're done with all the mod chip, guys. All the pins are hooked up. Um, yeah, we're all set. So let's go ahead and put the motherboard back in the case, and we'll test out a burn game. I want to make one final note about the about the nine thousand model here. Um, pins one and eight. This is just my personal preference, but I always like to. To use the alternate points for pins one and eight which is uh which are both right up here beside the chip um not only because it uses less wire but it makes your installation look cleaner um, so you can just run pin one to like right there beside it and pin eight right there beside it um, you don't have to run these extra wires down here um, to get those those points again it just makes your work look look professional and neat um, the only wires that you do have to run down are, are uh, number five and six again that is just my personal preference. You can do it any way you want. Um, it doesn't matter. I just like my like my work to look neat and professional. So yeah, I just I, I always like to just do it all in this area if I can. The reason I did it this way in the video is to kind of give you an idea of what to expect uh, when you install your mod chip. Um, again, everything on here was done by the diagram except for uh, pin number four, which is like all the way across the motherboard. So it uses like it's six or seven inches of wire. It's crazy. Um, so that's why I soldered pin four right here, um, just to just because I hate having to solder that one wire. Um, but you know, otherwise I just wanted to show you guys what it's kind of what it's like. And again, you can do it any way you want. This is just how I do it. So don't feel like you have to, you know, do what I'm doing here in the video. Again, your personal preference. 
I've got the case partially put back together. Uh, as you can see, I've also got the motherboard in there. So real quickly, I want to show you what, what I'm talking about with that electrical tape that's optional. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have the chip installed right there. And there's, I've just got a little piece of black, black electrical tape right there on top. And I just stuck it to the shielding just in case um, the chip ever comes unattached from the motherboard and it kind of maybe it bounces around, um, you know, for whatever reason it won't come in contact with the shielding on top. So um, this is, this, that's a pretty decent clearance. I've seen other motherboards or other models that have a little bit less clearance than that. So uh, I, I just like to use electrical tape as just a um, second line of defense on that. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily necessary. It's just uh, something you can do if you want to. Okay, so I just finished up cleaning up the case. I washed everything so it's all clean now. Um, I also cleaned the disk drive inside, um, got all the dust out, greased the uh, the transmission and everything, greased the rails, and as you can see, we're demoing some Bloody Roar 2, and it is working great. So um, I want to wrap up by saying some words about uh, burning your, dis your your games, and specifically about buying CDs. So um, the PlayStation is one of those systems that really does not like to read cheap media, like Memorex. Uh, it's kind of like the the GameCube and maybe the Saturn. Um, you when you when you buy CDs, you really need to make sure you get good quality ones. So I'm going to recommend two here. Uh, this is what I use. Um, I'm at I'm, I'm out actually out of this this brand here. These are but these are specifically verbatim um, Data Life Plus Azo CDs. Uh, these are very high quality CDs and they work great for burning games. Um, you typically can't get these in stores or not anymore at least. Um, you usually have to go on Amazon to get these. Um, but those are highly recommended. I, I have used those with good success. I also recommend getting either, um, I guess you pronounce this Tyoyudin slash JVC. Um, you can also get these on Amazon. This was actually a, a bulk order of maybe, uh, I think it was 100 CDs in, in one, one pack. And it was like 11 bucks. So. These are also very good, uh, good, very good quality CDs. I have used those. That's what actually what I'm using right now on this PlayStation. Um, so yeah, one thing to remember when you're burning games is always start with with good quality media. If you if you uh, burn to a, a a really cheap CD and you're having um, issues with your system reading those games, um, it could it, you actually don't know what the issue is. It could be the CD that's giving you problems, or it could be the system itself. So. Like I said, I recommend buying good CDs, burning those first, and then, and then when you run that, if you were still ha having problems, you can kind of rule out the possibility of that CD not working because more than likely it does, and you can you can um, poss possibly say you know it's the system that needs some attention. So basically, guys, we're we're all done with the PlayStation. I just wanted to say a few words about that. Um, so uh, in the meantime, uh, stay tuned for more videos coming up. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I appreciate you guys subscribing. And in the meantime, take care.